Mulian rescues his mother or Mulian saves his mother from hell is a popular Chinese Buddhist tale first attested in a Dunhuang manuscript dating to the early 9th century CE. It is an elaboration of the canonical Yulanpen Sutra which was translated from Indic sources by Dharmaraksa sometime between 265–311 CE. Madgalyayana Pali, Magalana, whose abbreviated Chinese transliteration is Mulian, seeks the help of the Buddha to rescue his mother, who has been reborn in the Prata world in canonical sutra or in the Avicii hell in elaborated tale, the karmic retribution for her transgressions. Mulian cannot rescue her by his individual effort, however, but is instructed by the Buddha to offer food and gifts to monks and monasteries on the 15th day of the 7th lunar month, which established the Ghost Festival Chinese, Gui Jie Pinyin, Gui Jie. While Mulian's devotion to his mother reassured East Asians that Buddhism did not undermine the Confucian value of filial piety and helped to make Buddhism into a Chinese religion, it also reflected strong undercurrents of filial piety that existed throughout Indian Buddhism as evidenced through its canonical texts and epigraphical remains. The story developed many variations and appeared in many forms. Tang dynasty texts discovered early in the 20th century at Dunhuang in Gansu revealed rich stories in the form of Changki transmissions of the strange or Bianwen transformation tales. Mulian and his mother appeared on stage in operas, especially folk opera, and have been the subject of films and television series. The story became a standard part of Buddhist funeral services, especially in the countryside, until the end of the 20th century. The legend spread quickly to other parts of East Asia, and was one of the earliest to be written down in the literature of Korea, Vietnam, and Japan. Another canonical version similar to the Yulanpen Sutra, has Sariputta as the chief protagonist and is recorded in the Theravada Petavathu. It is the basis of the custom of offering foods to the hungry ghosts and the ghost festival in the cultures of Cambodia, Sri Lanka, Thailand and Laos. Stages in the popularization of a canonical sutra Topic. Possible Indic precursors of canonical text and early history The Indian ancient classic epic, the Mahabharata, includes the story of an ascetic, Jaratkaru who sees his ancestors hanging upside down in purgatory because he has not married. His parents begged him to marry so they could be reborn in heaven. This is based on the Tang dynasty Sanskrit etymology of the Chinese word yulanpen said to be derived from Sanskrit avalambana or hanging upside down. Recent studies by Karashima has cast doubts on this and other old etymologies and have affirmed the connection of the yulanpen holiday with the Pravarana holiday. The Petavathu No. 14 The story of the mother of Sariputta, a Theravadan scripture in the Pali Canon, contains an account of the disciple Sariputta rescuing his deceased mother from his previous fifth life as an act of filial piety. Like other accounts in the Petavathu, it also records the reasons for her rebirth into the Prata world. The first reference to the Petavathu is in the Mahavamsa's account of Venerable Mahinda using it to teach Sri Lankans ca. 3rd century BCE. This may be the earliest Indic precursor to the Yulanpen Sutra. Another canonical account can be found in Avadanasataka which is also very similar to the Yulanpen Sutra. Madhgalyayana communicates on the behalf of 500 Pratas with their respective relatives who in turn make offerings on the Pratas' behalf to the monastic community. Once the transference of merit is completed, the former Pratas are reborn and released from their suffering. The Yulanpen Sutra or Ulambana Sutra is an Indic text translated into Chinese in the 3rd to 4th century CE, which records the time when Madhgalyayana achieves Abhijña and uses his newfound powers to search for his deceased parents. Madhgalyayana discovers that his deceased mother was reborn into the Prata or hungry ghost realm. She was in a wasted condition and Madhgalyayana tried to help her by offering her a bowl of rice. Unfortunately as a Prata, she was unable to eat the rice as it was transformed into burning coal. Madhgalyayana then asks the Buddha to help him, whereupon Buddha explains how one is able to assist one's current parents and deceased parents in this life and in one's past seven lives by willingly offering food, etc., to the Sangha or monastic community during Pravarana the end of the monsoon season or Vasa, which usually occurs on the fifteenth day of the seventh month whereby the monastic community transfers the merits to the deceased parents, etc. 
The earliest attested celebration of the festival appears in much later sources, such as the early 7th century record of the Seasons of Jingchu, which is a revision of an earlier text with same title from the mid 6th century CE that is no longer extant. However, based on references in various literary sources, it may have been celebrated even as early as the late 5th century CE. The sutra was in part translated and promoted to help reconcile Buddhism with the Confucian ideals of filial piety, however, there was already a concept of filial piety within Indian Buddhism which had a large overlap with the Chinese version but also significant differences, c. f. Anantarika karma. <laughs> Tang dynasty tales of karmic punishment and redemption In the Tang dynasty, Mulian was a popular topic of sutra lectures by monks. They often used pictures and songs to amuse their audiences, enriching the Mulian story with many variations and making it thoroughly Chinese. The storytellers shaped their stories to meet the charge that Buddhism undermined filial piety because it took believers away from their families and prevented them from attending to their ancestors. The written versions of these stories were Bianwen, of which a large number were preserved in the library cave at Dunhuang, an oasis in Central Asia, and not rediscovered until the 20th century. The fullest and most important of these Dunhuang texts is Mod Galyayana, transformation text on Muhammad Galyayana rescuing his mother from the underworld, with pictures, one scroll, with preface. In this text, Mulian's original name is Radish or Turnip, typical Chinese nicknames, and his mother is Lu Qingtai. Before Radish became a Buddhist, he went abroad on business and gave his mother money for feeding monks and beggars. She stingily hides it away, and soon after Radish returns, dies and the Jade Emperor judges that she should be turned over to Yama, ruler of the underworld, and dropped to the lowest order of hell for her selfish deception. Mulian becomes a Buddhist and uses his new powers to travel to heaven. There his father informs him that his mother is suffering extremely in the Avicii hell, the cruelest of the purgatories. Mulian descends and meets ox-headed devils who force sinners to cross the river to hell and to embrace hot copper pillars that burn away their chests. But by the time Mulian locates his mother she has been nailed down with 49 iron spikes. He seeks Buddha's help and is given a rod to smash prison walls and release the prisoners of hell to a higher reincarnation, but his mother is not released. Mulian's mother is reborn as a hungry ghost who can never eat her fill because her neck is too thin. Mulian tries to send her food by placing it on the ancestral altar, but the food bursts into flame just as it reaches her mouth. To rescue her from this torture, the Buddha instructs Mulian and all filial sons to provide a grand feast of Yulan bowls on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, the time when monks emerge from their summer retreat. When his mother is reincarnated once again, this time as a black dog, Mulian recites sutras for seven days and seven nights, and his mother is reborn as a human again. In the end she is reborn again and can attain the joys of heaven. Filial emotion is vivid in this version. Mulian's mother calls him, My filial and obedient son. While Mulian, Chokes and sobs with his tears falling like rain. As in the Yulanpen Sutra, she only can be redeemed by group action of all the monks, not any one monk. Mulian, a good Chinese son, exclaims that the most important thing is, The affection of one's parents and their kindness most profound. As Guo puts it, by the late Tang, the Buddhist embrace of filial piety seems to have been taken for granted. And the way was open for further synthesis in later dynasties. The stories sometimes use earthy characterization. When Mulian's mother is reincarnated as a black dog, Mulian seeks her out and she concedes that she is better off than she had been as a hungry ghost. As a dog, she says, I can go or stay, sit or lie as I choose. If I am hungry I can always eat human excrement in the privy, if I am thirsty, I can always quench my thirst in the gutter. In the morning I hear my master invoking the protection of the tree treasures Buddha, the religion, and the community, in the evening I hear his wife reciting the noble scriptures. To be a dog and have to accept the whole realm of impurities is a small price to pay for never so much as hearing the word hell said in my ear." In another version. The Mulian legend. Mulian's mother, Lu Qingtai, had been pious but after her husband died took up sacrificing animals to eat meat, resorted to violence, and cursed. When she dies, the Jade Emperor judges that she should be sent to the underworld. 
Yama, ruler of the underworld, dispatches demons to take her, and she lies to them and to her son, saying that she has not eaten meat or done wrong things. The demons then take her away. <laughs> Operas The folk opera, Mulian Rescues His Mother, has been called the greatest of all Chinese religious operas, often performed for the Ghost Festival on the 15th day of the seventh lunar month. The performance presented the mysteries of death and rebirth in scenes whose impact on audiences must have been overwhelming, and which taught the audience religious and moral values, though not always in orthodox form. In the Ming Dynasty, Zheng Zhizhen Chinese, Zheng Zhizhen 1518 to 1595, a native of the Weizhou, Anhui, village of Qingxi, Zhenyuan County, wrote the opera Mulian Zhu Mu Xing Shao Shi Wen, Mulian rescues his mother. According to local legend, Zheng was blind when he wrote the opera and was restored to full sight by a grateful Guanyin. The legend also has it that when Zheng later wrote a love story, he went blind again. Zheng's opera places emphasis on Confucian family values. Topic: <laughs> Mulian in the 20th century. On the mainland, the genre started to decline in popularity after the 1920s. However, the Mulian opera revived when it was listed as a national intangible cultural heritage in 2006. But even supporters in the People's Republic see the future as under threat from high-tech television and films. There are several further challenges. In the past, the opera was passed on orally through family troops which kept their skills to themselves. However, these troops no longer exist. The opera is difficult to perform. The ghost roles involve acrobatic skills which require years of training. Since it is a genre that has a small audience, performers require government support. Some observers point to signs for hope, however. While traditional village audiences have dwindled, some film stars and celebrities have taken up the art. Local authorities in Wangshen City, Anhui Province, have also promoted performances as a tourist attraction. The performance of Mulian Rescues His Mother in Taiwan, along with other funeral related performances, is gradually disappearing. The reasons, according to Yang, are threefold. One, the shows are performed because many of the deceased enjoyed their performance while they were alive. These people are gradually dying out, and because of the changing Taiwanese culture, these shows are no longer as popular as they once were. Two, the growth of the nuclear family and simplification of funeral ceremonies. 3. The composition of the performers are mainly middle-aged and elderly. There are few newcomers learning the traditional performances since their clientele are dying out. Topic film and television adaptations Among the many film and television adaptations is a 1957 version, starring popular actor Ivy Ling Po. Topic translations Mayor, Victor, ed., 2011, a local drama from Shaoxing, the Columbia Anthology of Chinese Folk and Popular Literature, translated by Bereskin, Rostislav, New York, Columbia University Press, pp. 303-9 Ma, Y. W., Lao, Joseph, eds., 1985, Modgalyana Rescues His Mother from Hell, pdf, Traditional Chinese Stories, Dunhuang Bianwen Manuscript p. 2319, translated by Yang, Eugene, Reprinted, illustrated, and a note as Minford, John, and Joseph S. M. Lau. 2000. The Quest of Mulian: From Antiquity to the Tang Dynasty. Classical Chinese Literature: An Anthology of Translations. I. New York, Hong Kong: Columbia University Press, Chinese University Press. ISBN 0-231-09676-3, ed., Columbia University Press, ISBN 0 231 x Mayer, Victor H., ed., 1983, Modgalyayana, Transformation Text on Muhammad Galyayana Rescuing His Mother from the Underworld, Tun Huang Popular Narratives, Cambridge, New York, Cambridge University Press, pp. 87-122, ISBN 0-521-24761-6, Whaley, Arthur Mu Lin Rescues His Mother from Hell, Ballads and Stories from Tun Huang, translated by Whaley, Arthur, London, Allen and Onwin, pp. 216-235 Translation of Madgalyayana, Transformation Text on Madgalyayana Rescuing His Mother from the Underworld, with Pictures, One Scroll, with Preface, Johnson, David Mulian Rescues His Mother, in Deberry, W.M. 
Theodore, from 1600 through the 20th century, Sources of Chinese Tradition, 2, New York, Columbia University Press, pp. 93-104, ISBN 0-231-51799-8 excerpts. Whitfield, Susan The Nun's Tale. Life Along the Silk Road. Berkeley, University of California Press. pp. 155-73. ISBN 978-0-520-23214-3. A popularized retelling of the Mulian story by an imagined Tang dynasty nun. Topic references Topic Citations Topic Bibliography Bando, Shojin, ed. 2005, The Ulambana Sutra Taisho Vol. 16, No. 685, Apocryphal Scriptures PDF, Bukkyo Dendo Kyoke English Tripitaka Series, Berkeley, Namada Center for Buddhist Translation and Research, pp. 17-44, ISBN 1-886439-29-X, archived from the original PDF on 10 February 2013. Buddhist Text Translation Society. The Buddha Speaks the Ulambana Sutra. City of 10,000 Buddhas, retrieved 31 August 2018 CS1 maint, uses author's parameter link. Langer, Rita 2007, Buddhist Rituals of Death and Rebirth, Contemporary Sri Lankan Practice and Its Origins, Abingdon, Routledge. Mayer, Victor H. 1989, Tang Transformation Texts, Cambridge, Harvard University Press. Tyser, Stephen F. 1988, the Ghost Festival in Medieval China, Princeton, Princeton University Press, ISBN 0-691-02677-7. Further reading Cole, Allen Mothers and Sons in Chinese Buddhism, Stanford University Press Grant, Bayada, Idema, W. L. 2011. Escape from Blood Pond Hell, The Tales of Mulian and Woman Huang. Seattle, University of Washington Press. ISBN 978-0-295-99119-1. Guo, Katao Ritual Opera and Mercantile Lineage, The Confucian Transformation of Popular Culture in Late Imperial Weizhou. Stanford, California, Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-5032-7. Johnson, David G., Grant, Bayada Ritual Opera, Operatic Ritual. Mu Lin Rescues His Mother. In Chinese Popular Culture. Chinese Popular Culture Project. Berkeley, California, University of California, distributed by IEAS Publications. ISBN 0-9624327-0-9. Ladwig, Patrice Feeding the Dead, Ghosts, Materiality and Merit. In Williams, Paul, Ladwig, Patrice, Buddhist Funeral Cultures of Southeast Asia and China, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 1-107-00388-1. External links Mulian Saves His Mother series of images, with extensive links to other images of Tang Dynasty scroll paintings of hells and purgatories in the series narratives informing Chinese notions of hell at Reed College. Men Gu Wen Wei Ben. Mu Lian Ju Mu Jing. Mongolian depictions of Mulian rescues his mother. Mulian Saves His Mother YouTube 4 minutes 40 seconds East Asia Gallery Interactive of the www.acm.org.sg Asian Civilizations Museum Singapore. Worship and Opera Performances in Singapore. Mu Lian Ju Mu Mu Lian Ju Mu YouTube 6 minutes 4 seconds Singapore Opera recorded February 27, 2013. The scene in which Mulian meets his mother. Mulian Saves His Mother YouTube 1 minute 53 seconds. Nanyan Performance by Siong Leng Musical Association at the Po Shi Temple, Singapore. Mulian Fights Demons.